My topic for today's presentation is Linux security module, looking into the Linux security module. So to start with the topic, let me introduce myself. I, myself is one that I've been working as software architect and co-founder of Prasma Systems. Um, I also um, been engaged with Linux Foundation for Linux trainings in India. And the, my main focus is in development of system software for Linux and embed systems and I'm involved in product development for embed systems and network server systems and enjoys developing and training Linux systems and device drivers using the latest tools and methods. So the agenda for today's topic is to get into the understanding of Linux security modules starting with uh, an interaction, then dig digging deeper into its architecture and seeing how it is integrated with the Linux kernel and what are the different security modules that are present in the Linux kernel currently. So let's understand why security module support is needed inside the kernel. So as we are aware, security is chronic and growing problem as more and more systems are getting connected and online and the motivation to attack uh, arises and um, Linux is not immune to this threat. Linux systems do experience a large number of vulnerabilities and one of the important way to mitigate the software vulnerabilities by using an effective access control policies and methods then Linux security seems to solve this problem by providing a general framework to incorporate the security policies. So what we're going to understand and learn is uh, the Linux, frame, uh, Linux security model framework, its architecture and the existing implementation. So let's start with the Linux security module introduction. What is Linux security module? It's a framework integrated into the kernel to provide necessary components to implement mandatory access control without a need to change the kernel every time. And application whitelisting has been proven as one of the most effective way to mitigate the uh, cyber intrusion attacks. And a convenient way to implement this practice is used by making use of Linux security module. So what exactly is Linux security model? It's a code compiled into the kernel um, it uses the LSM framework. Now this LSM framework itself is intended to allow modules to lock down the system by inserting checks whenever the kernel is about to do something. And this hooks, system module hooks into the checkpoints. And for each operation checks whether a particular operation is been allowed or to be denied by the security policies that are currently being enforced. Um, this Linux framework allows, can access or allow the deny, uh, can deny the access to the important kernel objects such as inodes, file structures, data structures, and credential and inter-process communication objects. So to Move ahead, let's understand that the Linux security modules, they are being categorized as major LSMs and minor LSMs. Major LSMs are particularly being used to implement the mandatory access control and they mostly have the configuration policies that have been loaded from the user space applications. And at a time, only a single major LSM has, has, been, has to be enabled inside the kernel and as they supposed to have an exclusive control over all the security uh, contexts. And the very common example of major LSMs are SU Linux, Mac, Apple, and Tomoyo. And on top of for major LSMs, another LSMs, minor LSMs can be stacked. And they are particularly be implemented to provide a particular type of security functionality and they are stopped on top of major LSMs and hold a less security context as compared to 
major LSMs. And basically, they are being configured or enabled by making use of some configuration flags as opposed to having its configuration policies uh, that are loaded from the application space. And the examples of minor LSMs are uh, Yama, Load, Pen, Set, Safe ID, and Logtop. Now let's look at the overall architecture of LSM framework. So LSM framework provides a modular architecture whereby providing hooks inside the kernel and allowing the security modules to be installed and enforcing the access control policies. Now, in this diagram, we say that the security module uh, has been part of the kernel, holds the, uh, is integrated with the security framework, and the security policies are being loaded from the user face application with the help of some security utilities. And based on the security policies, util policies that are being loaded, the security module takes the decision. So now looking ahead, going ahead, looking at the architecture of LSM. LSM framework allows the third party access control mechanism to be linked into the kernel and allow it to modify the default discrete access implementation. By default, the framework itself does not provide any security, but it provides the infrastructure to support the security modules. So what does the LSM framework provides? It provides um, security fields, basically those are void pointers inside the various data kernel data structures. And it provides a functionality to insert calls to the fun hook functions at a critical point inside the kernel code to manage that security fields and to perform the actual access control. And besides that, it also provides some miscellaneous functions to register and unregister the security modules. So basically, what are the LSM hooks? LSM hooks helps to mediate various operations in the kernel. These hooks invoke functions defined by the chosen modules, and they construct authorization queries that are passed to the modules. The function can be overwritten by the security module to manage security fields and mediate the access to the various kernel objects. So other than the hooks, the main component of the security module is the security data fields. Now these security data fields, they are being added into various kernel data structures. Those are important kernel data structures. And with the help of the security data fields, the security information can be stored and been uh, mediated through the security modules. So LSM framework enables security modules to associate this information to this kernel object and they extend the sensitive data types. And basically they are opening wide data pointers and they are totally being managed by the security modules. Now here, these are the different kernel objects where the security data fields are being present. And as we are talking about the security inside the kernel, the various kernel objects like the kernel objects for process management and program management are like the structure and Linux bin binary program, which holds the security data fields. Similarly, the security data fields are also been present in the um, file system where security tracing can be, uh, access control can be managed for file system using the data structures as uh, super block file inode, uh, file structure and the inode structure. Similarly, the security data fields are also been present for networking uh, networking subsystem inside the packet and network device, like the data structure socket buffer, which encapsulates the uh, packet, IP packet, and the net device structure that represents the network device. Okay, so the security fields are part of this uh, data structures. Similarly, the security fields are being uh, in, uh, added into the system V uh, IPC mechanism uh, and some of the data structures is con IPC bar and message. So here this is just to give an example how the security fields are part of the different 
kernel object. So here you see the example of file that I know as this super block. So now, once we know that the, uh, the Linux security module correspond, uh, consists of the security hooks and the security data fields, now we'll look at the data structures that used to keep track of the various LSMs and how the function uh, hooks are to be implemented and how they will be called at the various kernel uh, critical code path. So these are some of the main data structures used by this LSM framework. So one of the important data structure is the security hook list structure, which maintains the list of security hook structure itself and stores the information of the LSMs added into the system, the various LSMs that are added into the system. Now, each of the LSM provides the set of hook functions. So these functions are being uh, maintained and taken care of by the data structure that is a union of security list options. So this uh, data structure is a union of function pointers of security hooks defined for that particular LSM and which are called at the various critical paths inside the kernel code. Now, once we have defined the various hooks for the particular LSM, we need a mechanism through which these hooks will be called. And there has to be some way when there are multiple LSMs being stacked upon each other. And to, for that purpose, we have this data structure called a security hook ads, which contains the heads of the linked list corresponding to each hook and which helps this, uh, this helps for allowing the execution of the hooks in a particular right order when uh, respecting the start stacking property of the LSM. So here in this case, like if you look, go back and look into the kernel the tree. So here in this case, I have a kernel for 5.6.14. Um, these are the, this is the header file LSM hooks.edge where all these data structures are being defined. So here in this case, when you look at the first data structure that is security hook list data structure, which holds the list for all the LSMs that are being defined. Similarly, we have this, the main data, one of the other data structure is the options data structure, which contains the hooks that are to be called at the various kernel, uh, kernel code path based on the different kernel objects that it is referring to, such as like file system or networking uh, or IPC mechanism that has been used. So here we say that these are the different uh, it's, a, it's a union of function pointers. We'll go into the details as we move ahead with this presentation. So this is to give an exam, a little bit snippet of security in this options hooks. In this code snippet, what you see is some of the function pointers defined for particular op kernel operations such as creation of for, uh, directory by this uh, function pointer path underscore make directory then there is a path underscore rm directory to this hook will be called at a point when the directory has been removed then there is a hook for file open whenever a file operation open operation happens then in the in the kernel code part when the file open operation is happening this hook is getting called then there is hook for inode creation, socket creation, task allocation, and IPC. So these are some of the operations, uh, some of the some of the hooks that are being defined as part of this data structure, as you see, um, to provide the security hooks inside the kernel code. So to give more clarification on this LSM hooks, they are mostly been defined to return an integer value and some of them might return a void. So whenever there is an integer value and a value zero is basically been used to give an authorization that the access has been allowed. 
And in either wise case, it might return an error condition such as access denied by the security policy or enough privileges not being pro present for the action or might be some memory allocation issue. Now, when we are talking the hooks, there are like two types of hooks. One is object-based hooks and another is like path-based. So when we talk of object-based hooks, those are like, they operate on the data structures like inodes, files, or sockets. And authorization will be based on this object attributes. Whereas other types of hooks, they are based on the paths. And uh, to talk more about security data fields, this is like, it is a functionality provided by the LSM framework, which allows for enabling special fields located in this data structure, various data structures and reserved for use for security modules. And usually they ends with the underscore suffix and allows for maintaining a contacts between different hooks. And they are basically being used by the major LSMs and minor LSMs do not use the security fields. So other functionality being provided by the LSM framework is like they also provide the auditing functionality, which provides an alternate way for generating log files and also have an interface for creation of pseudo file system, which can be used to interact, which can be used to interact with the user space application and for loading and editing some access rules and policies uh, for that particular LSMs. So now, once uh, now as we have looked into the data structures that represents the LSM framework, now let's look at how our LSM code is integrated into the Linux kernel. And for enabling the Linux uh, security module inside the kernel, there are these are some of the uh, places where we need to take a look at. One is the kernel configuration, which defines the security module uh, policies, not policies, but the behavior of that uh, security module and how it has been controlled during the kernel building process, as well as when the security is up module has been enabled and the kernel is up and running. And other than that, we'll have the make files where which to integrate the LSM code and get compiled inside the kernel based on the kernel configurations. And there might be need based on uh, for the basic security module code and then which so as to integrate with the Linux framework. So we'll see one by one what these things. So here in this case, um, uh, LSM kernel configuration, one of the very basic kernel configuration that is config default, uh, default configuration kernel config needed to be selected at the boot time. So if you want, suppose a, if you are working with a Yama security module, so here in this case, we see that this uh, config security Yama has been defined in this, um, in this directory security, like if you go back, so security, there will be Yama name directory, and here in this case, key config, key config has the kernel configuration defined for security. And as we see this by default, the security is uh, by default, it is no, means it will not be built as part of the kernel. So when we are building the kernel, that security uh, kernel configuration, we have to select this functionality so that it is enabled inside the kernel. And it also holds the information like what it is uh, dependent on and various other stuff. So once the kernel configuration has been done, the make file is the part that will include the instruction to get that uh, security module code in, in integrated in integrated or built into the kernel. And then we see like how the integration happens with the kernel. The major LSM framework code is 
contained in the security directory, particularly security.c file. And it has the LSM framework initialization code by which calls the security init functions. Um, this security init function uh, does the work of enabling um, the LSM framework and loading the security modules in the order like capability module, then minor modules, and the major modules. So now here in this case, the basic um, cause uh, uh, capabilities as part of the discrete access control and extended security has been compiled as the capability module which gets lo loaded at the very first time first module then the minor lsms and the major lsms now whenever a security module has been unable it has to be registered with the kernel and that is done with the help of this api called as security add hooks which registers this particular LSM inside the, with the kernel. Now here in this case, we see the example of Yama LSM, where it is calling security ad hooks. And the parameters that are passed to this is the uh, array, array of security hook list structure and the size of that array. Okay. So like if we go back into the current code and look at function it passes, it takes this parameter, this is nothing but an array of security hook list, which defines the various hook functions. Okay, these security lists hook structures um, defines the all these different hooks so here in this case like let's look at how this linking of hooks takes uh, is used for help for uh, taking care of the stacking of lsm the mechanism is used for every single hook defined by the lsm integrated into the linux kernel and enabled so the security add hook function is then expected to correctly link all the security list structures, yeah, security hook list structures. So this way it helps to obtain one link list per LSM and one link list per hook provided by the LSM. So here in this case, now what happens like with the help of the security ad hooks, what we are doing here, we are registering a set of functions for the YAMA module. So, and then this security hooks will be called from various kernel code path whenever uh, a particular functionality is being exposed. Okay. So to, to get these hooks being called, the kernel, uh, how uh, the kernel, let's look at how the kernel calls this LSM hooks. Now, kernel functions that contains the LSM hooks call the related hook wrapper functions. And these wrapper functions, they are being defined in security.c. And then the secure wrapper functions goes and in turn calls uh, either of these two functions, that is called in integer hook or called white hook. As we have seen previously that the hooks might return an integer value or a white value. So based on that, the hooks are being defined. So for instance, for Yama P trace, uh, trace me hook, which corresponds to P trace, trace me kernel function, which is defined in this kernel P trace dot C. So we see that uh, this P trace, trace me call security P trace, trace me function. So if you go back, kernel P trace. So here, in this case, we are talking of a ptrace function, which is called from the ptrace system call. So here, what this ptrace system call, it is calling the function that is security ptrace, which is defined in security.c. And this 
security pay trace uh, trace me in turn goes and calls in it uh, call in it hook function and um, that is the hook function is the trace be trace trace me which we have seen as a different as being defined in the yama uh, yama lsm module so this is the function that eventually gets called and in that core flow from the kernel function so we see that the call to call or security pay trace defined um, defined in security dot c calls this init hook and eventually it will go and call the actual pay trace hook defined by yama uh, ls module so these calls uh, calls like hooks like call init hook or call while hook simply iterate over the linked list corresponding to the hooks uh, hooks calls defined by the security modules that are unable on the running system so this is the definition of this uh, these two macros where it goes and iterates over the hooks that are being defined for that lsms all the lsm that are being enabled on the running system so in case of the hooks that are returning the integer value the iteration is interrupted if either of the hook returns a non um, zero value um, if, but thereby satisfying the cannot override the denial rule as such okay and by providing limits to the standard api of policy enforcement and lsm ensures to enable the widespread deployment of security hardening of systems so now let's look at this whole flow of security with the help of um, open system call how the open system call uh, encounters the lsm hooks and based on the policies take the decision whether the open system call is been allowed or it is to be denied okay so here in this case the lsm framework integrated into the kernel provides each lsm framework with the hooks as we have seen in the previous uh, slides and from the diagram this shows the uh, flow flow of the open system call now usually the process in the user space makes an open system call on the file path the system call uh, is dispatched and the path string is used to obtain the kernel object such as file object and the inout object corresponding to that file and if the parameters are incorrect then error is written otherwise a normal discrete access control file permissions are checked and if the permissions are not uh, does not match then an error is returned uh, to the user application but if the if the discrete access control uh, is satisfied that the lsm framework act on the file uh, act on each of the file open hooks for the lsms enabled so here in this case we see that there is an opening call and we also seen that there is corresponding file open hook present so that is file open hook gets called at this at this point after the uh, discrete access control checks are been passed so what this file open hook will do is like based on the policies whether it will check whether access has to be granted or not and if the access is not to be granted then it will return a particular return the error to the application and finally if all the security checks are passed the file is open for the process and a new file descriptor is returned to the user space so here based on the policies that have been loaded uh, from the user applications user space programs it will take the decision whether the access to be granted or not and then if the access will be granted uh, it will be uh, the file will be open and the descriptor or file script open file script will return to the application so this this is how like each of this hooks takes the decision based on the policies that have been enforced So now let's look at the various hooks that are present that are being defined in the, in that uh, union uh, list structure which holds the function pointers for the various uh, hooks. So and we'll look at the various uh, data structures 
and the subsystems that where the hooks are being integrated into the kernel code paths. Okay, so for file system hooks, the um, BFS defines the uh, some of the primary data structures like superblock data structure, file and object I know uh, data structures. So each of these uh, structures hold the security information, and there are a set of function pointers or hooks been defined that operate on these data structures. Okay. And this is interface is a perfect place for LSM to mediate the file system access. So let's look at some of the hooks that are used to uh, mediate the superblock uh, accesses. So superblock, this data structure is used while mounting and unmounting the file system or obtaining the file system statics. And there are some some uh, couple of hooks that are being used for operating on this super block data structure, such as like whenever the file system is to be mounted, then the, the hook called as SB mount will be called. Similarly, when the file system is unmounted, uh, there is a corresponding hook called SB unmount hook to check the permissions while the file system is to be unmounted. Similarly, like remount hook is to verify the mount uh, verify the mount options and the SB status is the hook that is to check the permission when a task tries to obtain the file system status text to here if you go back so this is the data structure so here we are look at so here these are the some of the so we have seen this SBA stat, stat up this for getting the stat uh, file system status, mount, unmount, or these other hooks that are part of the file uh, super block uh, operations. Similarly, the, there are a set of hooks to operate on um, the file data structure. The file data structure represents a file that has been opened and it contains file operation data structure, which describes the various operations that can be done on the file. And the various operation can be read uh, read from or write into or seek through or memory mapping of the file and so on. And LSM framework provides this uh, hooks to mediate the access to the files. So here in this case, if you look at file operation, file permission, this hook is used to validate the read and write permissions at each file read and write operation. Similarly, like file logs is used when when logging to synchronize multiple readers or writers and um, again there are different hooks as file ICTL or file FCNTL to be used for miscellaneous file operations that comes to the different system calls like IUCTL or FCNTL. Again there are hooks for uh, inode data structure which inode data structure represents the kernel object such as file directory or symbolic link and LSM provides a group of hooks that mediate the access to this inode data structure and the uh, inode data structure is populated either when the file is full of up operation happens or this is file system object creation or creation happens so and for all this particular different operations there are well defined hooks been defined to act on the inode such as create make DIR, uh, remove DIR, make node, rename, link, unlink, symbolic link, and set of hooks for getting and setting the attributes and also for permission, checking the permissions. So based on the LSM implementation, what kind of mandatory access functionality that particular LSM is defining, all this different LSM hooks has to be implemented as part of that LSM. Now, for taking care of security at the task system level or the process level, the security hooks for task handling is done through the task hook. And the task data structure is the current object to represent the schedulable task. And the different hooks that are provided mediate access, mediate a task access to the basic data structure. So these are some of the hooks that is task allow, hook is called to verify task has spawned children and task kill is called when the task exits. 
So during the life uh, cycle of the task, some information may change, like the process can execute a set user ID system call, which eventually it will go and call another hook called as task fix set UID hook. Okay. Now, these are some of the hooks that uh, are to work with the IPC mechanism, system B IPC mechanism, such as shared memory or semaphores and message queues. And again, LSM provides a set of IPC hooks that mediate access to these IPC objects, such as IPC permission hook, create checks the IPC permissions. Similarly, message queue, message receive hook, check permission before the message is received from the message queue. And similarly, there are functions for shared memory and semaphore control. Again, now there are another set of hooks for working on networking subsystem. As we are aware that networking is an important aspect of Linux and more importantly, securing the system from network attacks, LSM has provided uh, the extended security to this area. So access layer, uh, application layer access to networking is mediated via the series of socket related hooks and these hooks are fine grain and have been implementation for ipv4 uh, unix unix domain netlinks uh, netlink infinity band and transport protocol as well and there are set of hooks for socket system corresponding to the socket system call such as bind connect listen send and receive messages and the other networking socket system calls. And the network data structure, data traverses the network stack in packets encapsulated with socket buffer. Socket buffer is the data structure that represents the packet itself. LSM provides the opaque security fields inside the socket buffer so that security states can be managed across network layers and per packet base. So other than that, there are other areas inside the kernel where the hooks, where security data fields are being added and the other system hooks are also being added. So this, like if you are to talk about LSM framework and if you do not, talk about the security of loading and unloading of kernel modules and this frame, this discussion will be incomplete. So the LSM loading hooks, there are LSM loading hooks, take checks for permissions, whether uh, providing the creation and initialization of loadable kernel modules. It also provides hooks for security key management uh, and checking hooks for system change of system time, allocating new virtual memory mapping, accessing kernel message buffer. Also, it has LSM provides hooks for audit framework. Also, it has hooks for uh, EBFF and program functionality using uh, through this EBFF system calls. And besides that, it also defines a miscellaneous set of hooks to protect the sec remaining security sensitive actions that are not covered by the above functions. So now let's look at the current status of the uh, LSM inside the kernel. As of kernel 5.7, there are nine LSMs uh, present. And these are the list of LSMs, that is SLinux, Mac, AppArmo, Tomoya, Yama, Loadpin, SetSafeID, SafeSetID, Lockdown, and BPL. So let's look at each of them to understand what they are. SLNX is one of the first uh, um, security model that got, got added into 2.6 kernel. And this is the reason why the whole infrastructure LSM framework came into the Linux kernel. And this is the default mandatory access implementation on the Red Hat distribution. And it consists of a security module and set of trusted service for administration and secure system execution. 
Another uh, is the uh, similar to SA Linux Mac is also uh, attribute based method to access control, and it is the second LSM diplom and development that got merged as part of 2.6.24 release. And basically, it is a simplified version uh, and is designed for embedded the systems and to provide a simpler administrator uh, tools. And they are, it has been one of the um, default um, uh, mandatory access uh, implementation in automotive grade Linux and ties. App more, app armor is uh, another mandatory access implementation. And it is the default implementation for Debian based systems and it is a path-based implementation rather than attribute-based. Policies are based on paths, uh, can protect files on the file systems rather than the attribute base where uh, attributes are not required for storing security context information. Another is the Tomoyo. Tomoyo is also like FR more path-based implementation and was first merged as part of 2.6.30 kernel released. And Tomoyo is used to enforce mandatory access uh, using the domain uh, which is determined by the process execution history and each domain is represented by the concentration of previously executed paths. Now, here we see the other uh, minor LSM load pane, which was merged as part of 4.7 kernel. And it uh, load pane ensures kernel loaded files like um, modules, kernel modules, are originate from the same file system. Uh, file system, that is with the expectation that the file system is backed by the uh, read only device, such as. Uh, uh, CD-ROM, RDM uh, variety. So this is this is intended to simplify the MID system development uh, systems that need uh, not uh, have the kernel module signing infrastructure in place uh, if the if the system is configured to boot from the read-only devices. Uh, Yama is uh, another minor LSM merged in 3.4 kernel and it is intended to collect system-wide um, system discrete access security restrictions that are not handled by the core kernel. And its scope is reduced to the p system call that, uh, uh, so that if a successful attack on one of the processes that are running is happening, then based on the AMA policies, it can restrict that whether the process um, address space can be traced or not. And whether uh, using bitrace to extract sensitive information from other process running as the same user. Now, another LSM called self set ID is, was merged as part of I.1 kernel. It is used to restrict the user ID and group ID transitions from a given user ID group ID to only those that are approved by the system whitelist. Set safe ID gets, set, gets the set ID family of system calls uh, to restrict transition from a given UID to only those that are approved. And another LSM for lockdown as was merged as part of 5.4 kernel implements a lockdown feature of the kernel where when, a, when lockdown is enabled, the kernel parameter can be used to lock down the kernel in either of the mode like integrity or confidentiality mode. So when the lockdown is set to integrity, the set of features that allow user space to modify the kernel are disabled such as um, access to slide dev mem or kernel memory of our codes, and then KXAC of unsigned images and access to raw access to IO codes and memory, um, unsafe module parameters. So all those are being denied when the lockdown is set to integrated mode. 
And when the lockdown is set to confidentiality mode, along with the integrity function, feature, functionality, it also disables the features that allow user line to extract potential confidential information, such as running kernel from the kernel, running kernel, such as flash prop K4 access or use of K probes or use of BPF to read the kernel memory or unsafe use of corp and use of trace effects. So this gives us the various idea of the various LS modules uh, that are present in the Linux kernel. So to conclude about the Linux security modules, Linux security modules are not designed to prevent a process from being attacked. That for that a good coding practice, configuration management and memory safe languages are the tools. But Linux, the protection provided by the Linux security module do however help protect your system from being hacked when the attacker tries to exploit some flaws in the running programs. They are important, they can be an important year in any defensive strategy or Linux systems. And by understanding what protections they provide, you hopefully have a great appreciation for what system needs to protect and how to implement those protections. So this completes our session on understanding the Linux security module and getting into its details and the understanding the various types of security modules that are present in the Linux system. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here to take the questions. So I will go through the list of questions that answered as much to those who are. So does SLNX fit into this framework? Yes, indeed. SLNX is one of the first uh, LSM models that got merged into the kernel. In fact, SLNX was the main reason for how this Linux uh, security framework came into a picture and eventually the other features was added back. Is there any second question? Is there any information which LSM is a major and which is minor in the kernel source code? Yes, the kernel source code and the documentation does mention about the set of um, LS modules that are part of the kernel and what which are the uh, major ones and the minor ones and of course in the configuration and the methods we have to specify the art of the minor that has to be loaded uh, when the kernel configuration happens. Another question by Andrew does the security fields of some structures preserved after the reboot? I do not think that the security fields are preserved after the reboot. Means the whole security context is as part of the live kernel and as part of the various kernel data structures that they are being acted upon. And those data is available as long as the kernel is up and running in that context. Okay. Another question, my Wilson, is what is the best way to measure the ORAD of these LSM ports? So as you've seen, one of the one way is to use the LM benchmark to to measure the performance of the various system calls performing the different uh, operation and measure in the open and probes and major file statistics information. And that is one of the tools that has been used to measure the performance effects. One of the questions that Sashi is Does Linux 4.1 has LSM support? Yes, indeed. LSM support has been added since 2.6, and corresponding new LSM modules but are been getting added on top of that. I have a question by Andre. Can some LSM hosts be called before the discrete access control checks? Uh, uh, no, actually, the order in which uh, 
the hope to call for the distant access control um, hope steps are being done because that's the in the security feature and then after the um, discrete access checks are then done then we have a sent consent to picture where if there is any ma ma uh, major implementation that is any major digital access control that will be done another question by shashi is configurable from uh, through make config yes so to enable any security module into the kernel we have to configure that at the book compile time by making use of make many config uh, does uh, another question by android does any lsn have clearing memory feature when free is called or clearing the stack variables so i don't know i don't think so there are any hooks as such a present at this moment for clearing memory feature as such uh, and uh, as same with the stack variable so the memory this these, these hooks are added at the various um, subsystem that is file or uh, system call a file system networking and as such so particularly for mem clearing memory or clearing stack variables there are no hooks being present. Another question is, is SLNX attribute based? Yes, SLNX is attribute based uh, LSM uh, mandatory access implementation. So, yeah, I think that's the, the best question I have. Okay, that's that's all from my side. Thank you. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to be part of this conference.